All right, well, so far in this channel, I've told you my philosophy of relativistic skepticism and how I look at the world, how I break the world down into concepts that I can use to think about the world. And that's like me saying, hey, it's raining, and you can believe it or not. You can try it and see. It's not too hard. I try to make it fair, but I'm not trying to preach, and so that's the way it is. But I'm going to start talking, I think, a little bit about objectivist metaphysics again, a little objectivist, uh, Ayn Rand is whatever. Um, but it's going to be a little different. I'm going, not that it's raining, but the, here's why you have to admit this or at least explain your confusion. Um, Basically, the best work on this to date is collected, that I know of, is collected by George Lakoff and his works. And um, so, for example, in Philosophy in the Flesh, he goes through lots of metaphors that we take for granted. And for people like Trick that to say, well, there's these axioms and they're, they're not even logical because they just exist there. Like, oh, no, th these things come from our evolution. It's possible to study it. So, for example, in Philosophy in the Flesh, let's just start. I wanted to start deeper in the book, but I realized, you know, it goes back. There's a reason he goes in an order. So, here's some, philo some metaphors for time that they've identified. What we will encounter in the future is ahead of us, right? And in this book, he talks about in other languages where, no, some languages they see the future is behind us. This is called time orientation. What we are encountering at present is where we're at. It's the present to us. And what we encountered in the past is behind us. Well, see, right there, even to understand something as fundamental and literal as time, we use spatial metaphors. Other cultures can use a different metaphor, that the orientation is different. There's a culture that thinks of the future as behind them because they can't see it. Okay, but... In addition, there's more than one metaphor of time that we use in the West. There's moving time. What we will encounter in the future is moving toward us. What we are encountering now is moving by us. And what we are encountering in the past has moved past us. And then there's the moving observer metaphor. What we will encounter in the future is what we are moving towards. What we are encountering now is what we are moving by. What we are encountering in the past is what we moved past. We talk about time's flow because all of these metaphors have flow and we can ignore that it's different that in one case you're moving through a liquid you're the thing flowing and another one it's flowing past you and so on another one where it's the space and the only flowing is indeed um you know we wouldn't consider it flowing it's it's uh, spatial relocation so those are different models that you find in physics because we use these metaphors to produce things it's the same thing with identity that that uh, that you are who you are that a is equals a well, what is a it's a metaphor it's it's a it's a thing an abstract thing well that's a kind of metaphor and it puts you in a set it's like for a to equal a well you're 10 years old and you're 11 years old and you're the way we talk you're 12 and 30 you're 40 years old. Those are all different identifiable people classically, right? Because those different moments in time, each one of those states is a thing with its own qualities. So even, you know, Piro, that's a category for all of those different things over time. It's a category. Okay. And the, what, how you define what should be a category and how one category relates to another is all done through metaphor with the body. Okay, so for example, uh, going on to events and causes. Now, our event structure concepts uh, in the objectivist tradition, according to Lakoff, uh, mean the following. Our concepts of causes, actions, states, and changes represent objective features of the world. They are mind-independent constituents of reality, part of the basic ontology of what exists. Hence, the concepts of causation, action, state, and change are literal and not metaphorical. And this is what the objectivist view is. And two, there's a single general literal logic of causation that adequately characterizes the causal structure of the world and all of our causal inferences. 
Okay, as in the case of time, we will look at the evidence about the nature of the concepts first. On the basis of that evidence, we will or argue that all of these statements are incorrect, and it appears instead that, one, event structure concepts, for example, state, action, and cause, are conceptualized metaphorically in terms of more specialized notions, e.g. self-propelled motion and force. Metaphor is, in a significant way, constitutive, constitutive of all event structure concepts. Moreover, we reason about events and causes using these metaphors. In addition, these metaphors emerge from everyday bodily experience. Patterns of body-based inference are the source of abstract inference patterns characterizing how we reason using such event structure concepts. And two, consequently, there is neither a single literal concept of causation nor a single literal logic of causation that characterizes the full range of our important causal inferences. Causation metaphors are central to our causal reasoning and there are many of them. And that's the point. You say A is an A, that's like time is time. But it's not. Time is three metaphors in, in our culture alone, and that's just clustering that they've done. You could, there's hundreds of related things they've clustered into time as flow, time as motion, you know, and so on. And then there's other cultures that have their own sets. Right? So the whole view, this whole view that you build logic from tautologies makes no sense. Tautology comes from the logic that you've built out of metaphors that you evolved from your bodily evolution and your brain being just a part of the body helping to coordinate it. So all it really knows how to think about is the body. And we get confused because parts of the body are senses and we think we're thinking about the thing out there. No, we're thinking about what we see. We can hear something. I'm thinking about what I heard. No, you're thinking about what you heard. Right? Do you see the difference? They all come from bodily metaphors, therefore, because that's all we can think about. You know, and then when we start using metaphors like sight, you know, we use metaphors for touching, you know, things that are sight based and we extend this idea of touch through sight out there into the world and then we have our imagination and we extend these virtual senses into the future. And we sort of confuse ourselves and forget, hey, well look, we're just running a body. All our metaphors are from the body, and when you trace it empirically with these studies of how people think and, 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 and what they say about what they think and how they apply what they think, everything comes down to metaphors that at the base level are not tautologies in logic. They're not the molecules of materialism. They're, the base level is things you can interact with, a thing you can pick up and with your hand and manipulate or smell or in any way sense in, inter in an interactive way. It, that's the base level. And if you get big things, it becomes abstract metaphors to understand. Things like time, we, we understand in terms of how we act in time. The large periods of time it gets abstract. Small periods of time, see we don't build our world up from the microscope conceptually, cognitively. We start at our level and we build our way down and we build our way up. Okay. So everything is based on our body and the shape of our body and the way it works in the universe that exists anywhere in our intellectual output, including mathematics and all of these uh, rarefied and oft deified uh, products of man, many of which I, I value very highly. I value highly enough that I think it's important to understand what they really are and where they really come from. It turns out the most fundamental misunderstanding that just about 90 nine percent of the people seem to still perpetuate even those that know better rhetorically express a better idea they still make this the the, the big category error you know the idea that placing something in the wrong category is the category error no categories categories right you know at what point does an apple become applesauce if i smash it with the hammer at what point? There is no point. There's two different states and each one can go into you know, its own applied area and be stuck. I, I want to eat some applesauce. I'll judge. But I just want some you know, citric acid. I don't care what form the apple is in, even if it's sauced up. But to me, it's one apple. It was one apple turned into that. It depends on how you're interacting with the world, ultimately, in a bodily 
material way. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it was people don't understand how much of their logic is mistaken. And it's become ironic to me as a logician, as someone that loves logic, but I understand there's multiple kinds of logic. I understand how logics are built. I understand how people invent new kinds of logic. And it's just important to understand that this classical logic with the category and all these law of excluded middle, it's just all bullshit. That's not how the reality is, and that's not how we think about reality. Even those of you that think you do, no, because they, we can go through how you talk and how you act and interact with the things and see the metaphors you're using and see that, no, the tautology isn't working because it dropped out and it's just captivated you. Your body invented these tautologies, you believe, and these ideas because it, it felt it could touch them slowly step by step from the objects it touched you know it's like I'm touching this and therefore there's certainty because I'm certain I'm touching it I mean that's just weak it's only because these metaphors have worked this this acts like a, what we think of an object as it doesn't mean it is that it's this weird complex of energy we know that now it still acts the other way and so we can use it that way and we're stuck more in that level of pragmatism and it's just ironic the people in the most rarefied levels according to them of this abstract object and Plato thinking he's trancing around in the world of forms you know semi-deified or whatever those people are the most fooled they are taking the folk theories of our body our mammal body from built into our by evolved into our body these assumptions they're taking those as some sublime truth that's true out in reality about reality that it's in reality these things like substance and objects and that has to be this exact this way this metaphor has to be how it really is and a copy of the metaphors out there we have a number two in our head there's a number two in nature and it's all just because of this folk theory of I believe it when I touch it which is a good way that's the root of empiricism but then it goes off in this direction of like empiricism gives us something different and you start advocating metaphysics and you've gone too far off so it's possible to come back trust our senses also doubt our senses and do this cycle and just face how our ideas evolved and that they're just tools and ideas and to the degree that they're miraculously like energy and silver light it's just like well now we have computers okay a thousand years ago it was like wow what, what I've never seen anything like it except for my own head well you know now we have computers and digital watches and you know these things do things they have ideas you know it's a program in a computer a platonic form okay well whether it has consciousness or not I'm just saying no it's a you know it's a copy of the document if you want to get an electrical engineer it can tell you exactly how the magnets in the computer are switched to make it all make sense there's just so many millions of them you know you gotta you gotta think at a higher level this is what we have in our head we have some sort of neurology it's great that it seems to have willpower it's great that there's this phenomenon of consciousness so it's terrible if you ask some whatever that's separate it's still physical it's got that same thing of anything going on in here is not out there. It's in there. You just we just said it. So if you have an idea of a horse, then that idea there isn't that thing isn't out there. There's no correspondence of that sort. There's a a mappability, a metaphorical link can be made, and it can be broken and made elsewhere. It can be made at both places at once. You can have three metaphors for time. You can have ten. You can have two. You can have none. Well, I'm not sure if you could have none. Theoretically, you could have none if you could not think about time. 